One night in Korea, an office worker named Soon Ye walks home all by herself. As a single career woman who works in a metropolitan city, Soon Ye is used to traveling alone and returns home sometimes late at night. When Soon Ye arrives at her apartment, she notices the lights inside aren't working. Suddenly, she hears a sound coming from her closet. Soon Ye braves herself to investigate the source but finds nothing. Unbeknownst to her, a mysterious figure appears from the dark and assaults her. Soon Ye tries to reach the door, but it is too late. Several days later, a woman named Yang Min sleeps on her bed with a stranger in her apartment room. However, Yang Min doesn't know this stranger nor has any idea of what currently happened. When the man's alarm rings, he gets up and eats breakfast while watching Yang Min sleeping. After the man leaves, Yang Min wakes up with a severe headache and not knowing about the man on her bed earlier. Like Soon Ye, Yang Min is a single career woman living alone in the room below Soon Ye's apartment. Before Yang Min leaves for work, she notices dirt on her door lock keypad and wipes it off with her scarf. While at work, one of Yang Min's co-workers actively steals her potential client. Yang Min and her friend, Hyo Ju, are annoyed by this, so they talk about it when they board a train to go home. While the two are chatting, a man named Gi Jong stalks them from a distance. When Yang Min arrives at her building, the night shift security guard informs her about a package from her mom. Before Yang Min opens the door, she notices someone has moved the cover of her door lock. Yang Min thinks it is her mom who did it. But when she asks her, she learns it wasn't her mother who moved the keypad's cover. When Yang Min is about to sleep, she hears someone pressing the keypad on her apartment door lock. The mysterious person then grabs her door knob and tries to open it forcefully. After a while, Yang Min walks toward the door to see who it is. But she doesn't see anyone at her door or in the hallway. Before she closes the door, Yang Min notices a cigarette butt on her front door and uses it as evidence to trace the culprit. The police arrive after receiving Yang Min's report. But sadly, the police don't take this seriously because they think the culprit commits no crime. The officers even scold Yang Min for reporting a similar case several times. Before the police leave, they urge her not to waste their resources. With no other choice, Yang Min returns to sleep even though she feels unsafe. Later at midnight, the mysterious person returns to her room and caresses her hair. Yang Min wakes up the following day with her usual headache. Before she leaves the building, she asks the day shift security, Dong Hoon, if she can see a clip from the building surveillance cameras. Dong Hoon agrees to show it, but Yang Min tells him she will look into it after she returns. Yang Min plans to move to another apartment building, so she goes to survey the place before moving in. Later that day, Yang Min tells what happened to Hyo Ju. Hyo Ju suggests that Yang Min change her door lock or get married so she doesn't have to live alone. Hyo Ju tells Yang Min to make a move on their branch manager, Song Wu, who is always nice to Yang Min. When Yang Min returns to work, she prevents her co-worker from stealing her clients again. However, Yang Min doesn't know that her client today is Gi Jong, the man that stalks her on the train. Yang Min tries to be friendly with her client by asking him several questions. After making small talk with her client, she offers her business card to Gi Jong. Unfortunately, Gi Jong thinks Yang Min is flirting with him, so he tries to ask her out. Yang Min refuses him politely, but Gi Jong can't take no as an answer. Gi Jong then makes a scene by calling out Yang Min for flirting with him and turning him down as soon as she notices his saving balance. When Gi Jong insists on taking Yang Min out by threatening her, Song Wu shows up and asks security to escort Gi Jong out. Later at night, Yang Min sees the building manager scolding the night shift security for not patrolling the area. Before Yang Min enters her door, she ensures no one follows her. Yang Min then goes to sleep as usual. But suddenly, the stalker crawls from under her bed and sedates her. After sedating his victim, he uses Yang Min's apartment as he pleases and then sleeps next to Yang Min. The following day, Yang Min talks with her superior about her job. Even though her contract is ending soon, the branch manager wants to make her a permanent employee because of her excellent performance. But Yang Min's mental health isn't in its best shape lately, so she doesn't get excited about that promotion. Later at night, Yang Min has to work overtime which causes her to go home without Hyo Ju. While waiting at the bus stop, Gi Jong appears and asks her to take a taxi with him. Yang Min tries to reject him, but the Gi Jong prevents her from going away. Song Wu then suddenly pulls up with his car and saves Yang Min. Song Wu threatens to report Gi Jong to the police if he ever tries to harass Yang Min again. After that, Song Wu takes Yang Min to her home. He also tells Yang Min to call him whenever she needs help or anything. Upon arriving at her home, Yang Min notices the lights in her apartment aren't working. Soon after, Yang Min hears someone knocking on her door. She is shocked at first, but when she hears Song Wu's voice, she decides to open the door. Song Wu tells her that she left her wallet in his car. Yang Min also tells Song Wu that her apartment lights aren't working, so Song Wu offers to fix it. After he fixes the lights, Yang Min invites him to stay for a coffee. Suddenly, 
Yang Min realizes that something is off. She confronts Song Wu and asks how he knows which number her apartment is. Yang Min remembers that she never told Song Wu about it, so it is suspicious that he knows. Before Song Wu explains his alibi, Yang Min goes outside and calls the police. When Yang Min and two officers arrive at her door, they find that someone has ended Song Wu's life. Because of this, Yang Min is taken to the police station for interrogation. The detective suspects Yang Min is involved in the act and plays victim by reporting it to the police. The detective's theory is also supported by the fact that police found many man stuff in Yang Min's apartment, indicating that another person is living with her. Yang Min is devastated by this, and she can't even defend herself. Luckily, the forensic team calls the detective and informs him that Yang Min is indeed a victim. They explain that they don't find any indication of Yang Min's involvement in Song Wu's body. In addition, the fact that Yang Min has several reports of intruder threats to the police proves her innocence and the existence of a third party in this case. Several days after the incident, Yang Min returns to work. But sadly, her superior informs her that the decision to promote her has been called off. Moreover, the management also decides not to renew Yang Min's contract, which means she is now unemployed. When Yang Min returns to her apartment building, she tells Dong Hoon that she wants to see a clip from the surveillance cameras. However, she can't see the clip in her hallway since the camera on that section is a fake one. Dong Hoon then tells Yang Min that the person who knocked on her door might be a drunk resident who forgot their apartment door. Dong Hoon then searches her apartment room before Yang Min enters to ensure nobody is there. When Yang Min cleans her room, she coincidentally finds a key to another apartment room. Realizing that this must be something her stalker dropped, she tries to find the door this key belonged to. After failing to open several doors, Yang Min manages to open an apartment above her floor. When Soon Ye investigates further, she realizes that Soon Ye is the apartment's owner and she hasn't been here for a while. Yang Min informs her discovery to Hyo Ju and asks for her help. Hyo Ju explains that either Soon Ye was the stalker or Song Wu somehow had the key to Soon Ye's room and dropped it before he died. To investigate further, Hyo Ju used her workplace computer and printed a record of Soon Ye's credit card that someone had recently used. After looking at the transaction record, they learn a pattern in which Soon Ye's credit card buys the same thing at a scheduled time. They try to call and text Soon Ye's number with a fake friendly text but still no response. They then wait for Soon Ye to show up at the store where her card was recently used. When they wait for Soon Ye, her number suddenly replies to Hyo Ju's text and acts as if they know each other. After that, they notice a girl buying something from the cashier at the exact time of the transaction record pattern. Suspecting that the girl is Soon Ye, they follow her to a slum area in town. Upon arriving at an intersection, they decide to take each road to track the girl. After searching for a while, Yang Min arrives at a suspicious building. She notices that the door lock on this building is similar to her at home. She tries to enter several combinations but gets it all wrong. Suddenly, she remembers seeing a dirt stain on her door lock, which resembles a number combination. After trying that combination, the door suddenly opens, and Yang Min sneaks inside. To her surprise, Yang Min finds Soon Ye inside the building, but she is tied to a bed by someone else. Yang Min immediately grabs her phone to call the police. Before Yang Min manages to inform the authorities, she hears someone else is about to enter the building. Yang Min then hides under the bed while the kidnapper walks into the room. Yang Min listens as the kidnapper tells the unconscious Soon Ye that he has a new target. The kidnapper then injects something into Soon Ye's fore and ends her. Ultimately, the kidnapper reveals that his target is Yang Min, the woman who lives below Soon Ye's apartment. Upon learning that this criminal is the same person that ended Song Wu's life, Yang Min tries to escape from the building. But when Yang Min reaches the front door, the kidnapper tells her that she drops her phone, forcing her to run away as fast as possible. The kidnapper chases Yang Min down through the slum area and manages to cut her escape route. She screams for help, but nobody comes to help her. She continues running away and decides to hide inside an abandoned building. However, the kidnapper finds her hiding spot and then corners her. Before he can do anything to Yang Min, Hyo Ju suddenly shows up and ram a trolley onto the kidnapper. Hyo Ju bravely tries to fight the kidnapper but gets overpowered easily by the man. Luckily, a police patrol car passes by, forcing the kidnapper to flee. When the police show up to investigate the building where Soon Ye was held captive, they don't find anything that proves Yang Min's testimony. The detective asks for clues to help them identify the criminal, but Yang Min only remembers that the man wore an old-fashioned wristwatch. Suddenly, another officer tells the detective that they find Soon Ye's body with Yang Min's business card attached to it on the rooftop. This leads the police to arrest Gi Zhang since he is the last person to receive Yang Min's business card. The police also find some footage evidence that Gi Zhang has been stalking Yang Min. However, Gi Zhang denies all accusations against him. But then, Gi Zhang accidentally says something that the police can use against him. Moreover, Gi Zhang also wears a vintage wristwatch which fits Yang Min's testimony. 
After the detective corners him, Gi Jong bursts into a rage and threatens to do something to Yang Min. Because of this, the police subdued Gi Jong and imprisoned him for further investigation. Several days later, Kyung Min moves to a new apartment. On the side, Gi Jong is released from prison because there isn't enough evidence to hold him. Gi Jong then goes to Kyung Min's old apartment building and lies to Dong Hoon to get her new address. Gi Jong pretends to be Yang Min's cousin and needs her new address to inform her that her father is dying. With no other choice, Dong Hoon decides to give him Yang Min's new address. Later that night, a package arrived at Yang Min's new apartment. When she opens it, she realizes the kidnapper knows her new address and sends her phone back. When she checks the phone, she sees pictures of her sleeping taken by the stalker. Suddenly, she receives a call from Hyoju's phone. But when she answers it, Yang Min sees that the stalker is hiding inside Hyoju's apartment. Yang Min then rushes to her best friend's apartment without locking her door. When she arrives at Hyoju's place, she frantically knocks on the door while screaming for help. Gi Jong suddenly shows up and punches Yang Min. She falls to the ground, and Gi Jong plans to drag Yang Min away. However, the detective and a police officer show up and subdue Gi Jong before he harms Yang Min any further. Now that she is saved from Gi Jong, Yang Min opens the door to Hyo Ju's apartment and sees that the kidnapper managed to hurt Hyo Ju and escape. Meanwhile, a mysterious figure manages to sneak into Yang Min's new apartment and duplicate the door key. At the hospital, the detective explains that the culprit used a recording of him hurting Hyo Ju and disguised it as a call to lure Yang Min out. The detective then tells her that they will perform a DNA test to see if Gi Jong's fingerprints match those on the tools used by the intruder to hurt Hyo Ju. Later at night, Yang Min apologizes to Hyo Ju for putting her in danger because she helped her. Hyo Ju tells Yang Min not to feel sorry because this is not her fault. Soon after, the detective shows up and gives Yang Min a hidden camera for her to set up inside her apartment room. When Yang Min returns home, she sets up the camera just as the detective's instructions. A moment later, Yang Min goes to a local shop to grab some groceries. Suddenly, Dong Hoon shows up and greets her there. Yang Min doesn't recognize him at first and apologizes to him. Amidst their conversation, Dong Hoon says something disturbing which makes her feel uncomfortable. Just before she leaves the store, Yang Min notices that Dong Hoon is buying something that fits the clue she gets from Soon Ye's credit card record. Not just that, Yang Min also notices that Don Hoon is wearing a vintage wristwatch similar to the kidnapper she encountered. Because of the uncanny coincidence, Yang Min rushes home and locks her door. Soon after, the detective calls Yang Min to inform her that Gi Jong's DNA doesn't match the fingerprint on the evidence. He also says that the real suspect had ended Gi Jong's life, so she is still in danger. The detective orders Yang Min to stay home while he is en route to pick her up. Yang Min obliges, but when she checks her hidden camera footage, she finds out that Dong Hoon is the stalker and the one who kidnapped Soon Ye. The most disturbing revelation for her is that Yang Min realizes that Dong Hoon is now hiding under her bed. When she rushes to the door, Dong Hoon catches her and knocks her out. Meanwhile, the detective begins to suspect Dong Hoon after he learns that Dong Hoon is related to a similar case in the other area. Jian Min wakes up in a room with Dong Hoon holding her captive. She finds herself in a similar situation to Soon Ye's as Dong Hoon threatens to hurt her if she tries to run away. While Yang Min falls into desperation, Dong Hoon mockingly comforts her. Yang Min then suddenly grabs a syringe and stabs Dong Hoon with it. Even under the sedative effect, Yang Min manages to drag her feet away from the stalker. Dong Hoon tries to hunt her down, but the detective enters the building before he catches her. Alerted by the detective's presence, Dong Hoon diverts his attention to ambush the detective. A fight ensues between the two men while Yang Min hears the brawl from her hiding spot. When the commotion sound stops, Yang Min comes out and finds that Dong Hoon manages to sedate the detective. Yang Min falls to her knee as Dong Hoon approaches her. In a desperate attempt, Yang Min pulls the carpet below Dong Hoon, causing him to slip. She then crawls to grab the detective's gun, but it is empty when she pulls the trigger. Dong Hoon is enraged with Yang Min's resistance, and he decides to hurt her repeatedly. Before Dong Hoon hurts her permanently, Yang Min pokes his open wound. Dong Hoon then grabs and throws Yang Min away, causing a wardrobe to fall on top of them. They continue their duel inside the tight space. When Dong Hoon gets her hand on Yang Min's throat, she pushes him away to a nail board, ending the life of the scummy stalker that terrorizes her life. In the end, the court ruled that Yang Min performed a self-defense act when she ended Dong Hoon's life, thus protecting her innocence. She now moves to a new apartment and continues her life. After she enters her new home, Yang Min checks under her bed to ensure that no one is hiding there. What would you do if a psycho stalker harassed you like this? Write your comment down below. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.